Now let's talk about adjustment layers. So I have this shot here of this woman walking and um, I added these three bushes here that are 3D layers and that are positioned into space. Um, and it, of course the shot is 3D tracked. And now I wanna color correct all of these three um, bushes here with one color correction. And of course it would be nice just to add an adjustment layer here and add curves. Um, however, now I'm also brightening the background here. So it would be really nice just to add an adjustment layer only to selected layers. So what you can do using workflow is you select your layers, then you come up with the main menu and you go to create linked adjustment layer. And now we have an adjustment layer here and on it are three effects and all these effects are referencing the layers that we you know, had selected. First, let me just rename the name to bushes. And now I can add curves, for example. But if I change something, nothing happens. So what we have to do is execute refresh connections. If you haven't watched my video on clones yet, just be aware that this refresh connections is a different refresh than the refresh layout, so don't confuse them. All right, let's execute it then. And now if we change something, we see that all of the layers are updating. And what happened is that this effect has been copied to all of these um, layers here. And you see that it has been added after all their internal effects. And yeah, of course, everything is linked by expression. And I can also add another effect here, hue and saturation. Of course, it's doing nothing as of now. Now I hit refresh connections. And now this one has been added as well. I can disable the effect and enable it. And it's also linked by expression. The same goes for the whole layer. So I can enable, disable it. Also, if I, of course, change up the structure here, I have to hit refresh connections again in order for that to update on the layers. Another thing you can, of course, also adjust the opacity of all the contained effects up here. If you look at the transparency of the layer, it's always set to zero and there's an expression on it. However, you can similarly just reveal this opacity slider here by hitting reveal layer opacity. And then I can switch up that as well. Let's say I want to add a new layer to it. So let me, if I duplicate that and hit refresh layout, the effect will disappear um, on that freshly duplicated layer. And let's say I move it around and I want to add like a new bush back there. And if I want to add this layer to our um, adjustment layer, I can just first select the layer I want to add, then the adjustment layer and then execute add layer references. So it works exactly the same as you would add layers to a clone. You could also just, you know, work with these effects here. So I could delete that, for example, hit refresh connections, then this layer here won't have an effect anymore. And I could also, if I duplicate that, add this the same way. One thing now with these layers is that they are a bit too sharp because the general footage just is a little bit unsharp. What I want to do now is add a Gaussian blur to it. Hit refresh connections. And now I have a blur. However, the problem is that the blur might work on these layers here now, but this layer is way too sharp still because the blur amount is the same. However, since it's further back, it won't appear as much. So the blur amount has to be much more for this one than for those. So what you can do with these effects, come up to the effects here, go to the Gaussian blur and select the property you want to be converted to comp size. Then I'm going to come up with a menu and this is only available via the menu. Hold on control or command and then click on convert property to comp size. And now you see already that the blur amount seems much more equal. So I would probably have to set this to two. And you see that, that it already makes much more sense the way these um, layers are being blurred. And if we look on the effects of these layers here, you see that on this layer further back, there is a blurriness amount of 10. And on this layer here, 
closer to the camera. We have a blurriness amount of 6.4 and on this one here we have a blurriness amount of 5.6. And there has been an expression applied to the whole thing in order to equalize these values. On the effect of the adjustment layer, there's also this expression here. It says, do not remove this line right expression below. And it tells you that this is a two comp size property. If you want to have an expression on there, you can just remove that this property and then add like a wiggle expression. And now that wiggle expression is applied to everything. You can also remove the property to comp size expression by selecting the property, then coming up with the menu, holding control or command again and clicking on convert property to comp size again. And now this has been removed. You can also use the convert property to comp size for rotation properties um, or for position properties. So I have this example here of all these shapes and they're all at different transforms. So now let me just create an adjustment layer and I can just use a group adjustment layer in this case. I can also just use the shortcut on Windows, which is Control, Alt, and period. And now all of the contained layers already will be added to my adjustment layer. And now let me just create a drop shadow. And now if I set the distance, you see that it will be completely different for all of the contained layers. It will be at completely random positions as it seems. So now I can go to the drop shadow and I can select all the properties I want to convert to comp size. So in this case, it would be the direction, of course, the distance and also the softness amount. Then I can come up with the main menu and click on convert property to comp size. And now, as you can see, all of these values have been equalized and I can change the distance and everything will move, you know, at the right position. Also, I can do that with position properties. So if I create a gradient ramp here and I hit refresh connections. Now, of course, all of these points here will be also at the wrong position and will look kind of weird. But then I can come up to the properties here, select them both go to convert property to comp size. And now they're all at the right position. You can also add several adjustment layers. So in this case here, I have this one correction applied to all the bushes. However, there are still, you know, here it gets brighter only for those layers in front and not the one in the back. So I just want to color correct these three here. What I can do is, you know, create an adjustment layer only for those. And I'm just calling the brighten front. And now adding curves to it and then executing refresh connections. Now I can just color correct those here. All right, and now I can just animate that maybe. And I can also do the same in the beginning. All right, I mean, of course we all see, it certainly doesn't work as a color correction like that, but you kind of get the point. I mean, this is what I'm trying to get at here. And the order of these adjustment layers here is important. So now if we look at, you know, a layer here that is contained in both of these adjustment layers, you see that the bright in front has been added first and the bushes effects have been added afterwards. And this is kind of the logical structure of that. So if you would add a normal adjustment layer, of course, the effects on that layer would be added first and then on that one after that. However, if we move it up here and we execute refresh layout, now if we look at these effects here, you see that the bushes effects are now first and after that reordered have been the ones of the bright and front adjustment layer. If we come up to a layer, you see that now these effects of these adjustment layers have been added after all the contained effects on the layer. However, it would also be acceptable, let's say you have these effects here after that and you hit refresh layout, it will still work. However, let's say you have them in between and you hit refresh layout, they will be moved out of there. 
So the effects on your layer either have to be before the adjustment layer effects um, or after that. Right now, of course, all of these effects here, they're all referenced by expressions. However, if I don't want that, I can uncheck link properties via expressions and hit refresh connections or just use the shortcut to unlink the properties. And now you see it has been unlinked. And if I look at the effects here of the bushes adjustment layer, you see that it now has been unlinked. And this, of course, uh, is something you can do after you worked on your effects and you need a better performance. If you want to work on that again, you know, just relink it. If you delete your adjustment layers, you will get these expression errors because of course there are still the effects of the adjustment layer that now cannot be referenced. So you would have to execute refresh layout after that and then they will be removed from your layers. But there's also a quicker way. Of course, you can just use the delete layer clone group function and now you won't have to hit refresh layout again. In the previous example, I already showed you a little bit about a group adjustment layer. So we can also, of course, do the same thing here. Just select our bushes, create a group, call that bushes. We can just add a group adjustment layer. And now, of course, if we would add a new layer to it. And now if we come up to the adjustment layer of the group, then if we hit refresh connections, it will be added to that. One thing that is different with adjustment layers as compared to clones is that if we are at one of the contained layers and we execute refresh connections, it will tell us that no corresponding clones have been found because when it comes to contained layers, this will only work with clones. So in this case, we would have to go to the adjustment layer itself and then hit refresh connections. Let's say I don't want this black solid here um, layer to be included in that. So I can just come up here and where the black solid layer has been added and I can just disable the effect and you already see that it's now being excluded. However, of course the effect is still copied to it. If you don't want to just execute refresh connections, now the effect cannot be found on the layer um, where the effect has been disabled here. If you want it to be included again, just enable it, hit refresh connections, and now it's already there. There's also a different mode of adjustment layers in Workflower, which is the matted adjustment layer. And the matted adjustment layer will just create a basic adjustment layer, an After Effects adjustment layer, and it will be matted to the selected layers. So what can this be useful for? The way that the linked adjustment layer works is that it applies effects to the layers. However, there's a certain order in which After Effects applies stuff to the layer. There are the effects and after that, there's the blending mode or the motion blur, for example. But this is not always the way I want the order to be. So let's say I'm compositing an element and I'm enabling the motion blur, but I also have to apply grain to it, you know, in order to make it work within the composite. And in this case, you can use a matted adjustment layer. So the effect will be applied after the motion blur will be applied. So here we have another example where I have this shadow here again. And as you can see, the black value of the shadow doesn't quite match the background. So this is brighter. So if I come up to my shadows here and I would apply curves and this layer here is set to multiply. So if I turn that up, so I match the black values, I'm also losing the magic of the transfer mode. So let's say I'm there, but I almost have no shadow left here anymore. I hope you can see that on your, your screen there as well. So what I can do then is go to my panel, hold on shift and click on create matted adjustment layer. Now it will have cloned this layer below using a clone and comp. And then I can apply my curves to that. And as you can see, I can just very easily try to match the black values, something like that. And I will not have modified the effect of the blending mode in that case. When you add a matted adjustment layer to just one layer, it will always create a clone and comp. If you apply it to multiple layers, it will always create a pre-comp clone out of all of these layers. 
So one thing I encounter very often when working on a visual effect shot is that I have this base footage and I need it all the time for all kinds of stuff to either create like a mat on top of something else so I can put the background element um, before like an object that has to be, you know, in between. Or like in this case I have here where, you know, what we worked on, we want to create this bump map from, you know, our base footage and I'm working here and uh, now I have to go scroll down, you know, find the footage, then copy it, um, come up here and paste it. And sometimes there are even like some effects on it or some tracking data or something Then I then have to delete again. And it's, it's fine, but it just takes, you know, a little bit of time for something you do so often. So there's the store layer function now. And the way you work with it is you select your layer, then go to the menu and hold on shift and click on store layers. Now, if we look at the project, um, we see there's a stored layers folder here and we see that the footage has been copied inside of here. And then we can, you know, come up to, you know, the layer we want to paste it above, then come up with the main menu and click on paste stored layers. And now this layer has been pasted there. So it's kind of like an extended clipboard. And of course there is a shortcut. You can also just copy your footage by holding down control shift six. And now it has been copied there and I can paste it by holding down control alt six or control six on Mac. And now I added that. I can also do that with multiple layers. So just select my layers here, then use the shortcut and then I can paste it. I can also have multiple store comps. Let's say I want these two layers here, for example, then I can use the second slot. By default, this slot only exists on Windows, but you can also set it on Mac and I'll show you in a second how. Just hold on Control Shift 7. Now you see a second store comp has been created and now I can just paste it by using Control Alt 7. And if you come up to the shortcuts, you see there are four possible slots for storing layers and you can set shortcuts for that. 